Gardner handed at that will be interesting. Not a lot of size on the floor for Little Rock right now. That's Myron Gardner at 6'6", who just jumped tip, jumped tip for Little Rock. So we'll see if Texas State can take advantage. It's, they look to get things going again. One of the best teams early on in the Sun Belt Conference. Hard to believe we're already near the end of January, heading towards February. Texas State, one of the favorites to take care of business in the Sun Belt Conference as Little Rock opens up and man-to-man -man defense. Kevin Osali with the switch and the pull-up. Thought it was a shot and said it's a beautiful feed inside the small and Isaiah Small gets the Bobcats on the board. Gorgeous feed there from the top inside Texas State. They're always good on defense this year. Their offense is exceptional. Three-point attempt on the other end is off the mark from the big fellow Myron Garner again. Myron Garner we saw two weeks ago really start to get his footing and a lot of excitement around him but Hadn't played in a long time because of uh, because of the layoff. Yeah, still a little rust for Gardner, averaging six and a half and four rebounds on the season. Struggling with his shot, though. Um, just shooting 28% so far this season from the floor. That's Jordan Jefferson off of the mark for Little Rock. They start 0-2 from downtown. We are off and running here in Little Rock as the teardrop right in the paint drops for Mason Harrell. Bobcats with an early 4-0 lead, and you can already see Trojans at a disadvantage early numbers wise. Yeah, and that's Harrell who is who's such a good scorer. It's just 5-9, has scored in double figures already nine times this season. Averages almost 11 points per game. Yeah, Little Rock's gonna have to do this with defense. They're gonna need a big game from guys like Kevin Osawe, Isaiah Palermo. Osawe fires it back down to Gardner. This time the triple drops and he gets the first bucket for Little Rock in the game. And, and that's what Little Rock likes to see as we said. Gardner has been struggling with his shot, but but at 6'6 and at the four spot really brings a lot of perimeter skills to the table. Has a nice looking shot, good ball handler, can take his man off the dribble from the perimeter. Nice drive by Harrell right to the paint, draws the contact from Jefferson as we get our first foul of the ball game. And with Little Rock having to go to this small lineup with so many guys out for the Trojans and Daryl Walker squad, it, it, maybe the way they hang in this ball game is to knock down those outside shots from the perimeter. Yeah, really. Whenever you're shorthanded like that, if, there, if there's one thing that kind of is, is a great equalizer in basketball, it's a three-point shot. It certainly would help if Little Rock can get hot from the three-point line. Looks like, unfortunately, they're going to be playing without a couple of their better three-point shooters tonight, Marco Andrique and Marco Lukic, both of which were questionable coming in. Just looking at them in warm-ups, I don't think you should expect them to play tonight. We will see how Darrell Walker mix and matches his guys this evening as Harold knocks down a pair of free throws. He's already up to five points tonight. Speaking of guys that can get hot from three-point line, C.J. White making his first career start tonight, the former Parkview Patriots. We'll see if Little Rock can get things going on offense. Texas State so dangerous. You know, they missed some time as well because of some COVID issues. And all of a sudden, Myron Garner putting a stamp on this ball game early as he gets the board in the bucket. Yeah, Gardner showing some nice activity earlier. Finished the play there, but also really set things up with the nice drive. Took his man off the dribble. Found Palermo in the corner for the open three-point look. That's nice rotational defense by Isaiah Palermo in the paint to knock it away. And, you know, again, they're shorthanded, but Little Rock fighting hard early. And Texas State, not a real big team, but they are elite on the offensive glass. 11.2 per game. They're grabbing offensive boards on 34% of their missed shots. Going to be a tough task tonight for Little Rock to keep these Bobcats off the offensive glass. Well, here's the guy we were all excited to see tonight is Asbury is not only one of the most special players in the Sun Belt Conference, but really in the region. He is so much fun to watch, so explosive. And if you got to catch that game against Louisiana, <laughs> You saw firsthand exactly what he can do. He's got such a well-rounded game. I mean, you could just see on that drive there he was fouled, but you can see the kind of shake and bake that he has on the perimeter is a nice three-point shooter, really shoots the ball efficiently from the floor, and then 83% at the foul line. That shot off of the mark. Texas State able to grab their own board. Here's Harrell as he'll pull up from inside the three ball and knock it down. Man, Mason Harrell off to a red-hot start. And for a guy who's 5'9", speaking of the players who shoot it efficiently from the floor. Harrell shooting at 48% on the season for a smaller player, taking a lot of jump shots, a lot of shots away from the rim. Harrell shooting it at an excellent percentage this season. Well, Trojans get a little sloppy with it as C.J. White was expecting Kevin Osawe to look for the ball. Instead, he throws it away. And now Texas State getting it back with a three-point lead. And needless to say, in a game like this for Little Rock where you're playing shorthanded, can't afford to give away extra possessions to Texas State. 
Trojans in man-to-man -man defense, trying to get some early stops. They got the mismatch on DJ and said, nice active hands from Osawe. DJ out of there with it as he drives to the other end. The freshman from right across the river over in North Little Rock has been really fun to watch so far as Palermo puts the spin move on, but he gets nothing but air. Good drive there by Palermo, made a nice spin, but just a little too hard. Didn't even draw iron on the short jump. Really active Trojan crowd too, preaching defense. It's a nice crowd on a Thursday night. It's, we've been waiting a while to get a little bit of basketball back at the Jack Stevens Center. Happy to have the Trojans back in action as Harold running things for the Bobcats. They've got the mismatch inside if they want it. Instead, Asbury with the pump fake. He'll go from downtown. Beats the shot clock, but that one's off the rim, and DJ Smith's out of there with it. Good job there by Palermo to get his body on Martin, keep the Bobcats off the offensive glass. Well, here goes Palermo, pull-up jumper, misses off of the mark, and Isaiah just, you can tell he's a little off to start this ball game. Yeah, and, and to your point earlier, uh, Little Rock needs someone to get hot. Without Nicola Marich, and he's become such a big part, always has been, but it's become an even bigger part of Little Rock's offense this season. Going to need someone to step up and make some plays on the offensive end. Well, there's Asbury off of the drive, and he goes inside, gets the block. And State, the defense is still strong, but offensively this year, this is a different Bobcat team. They score from the perimeter. Um, they, they, they're they a really much more well-rounded and balanced offensive team. I like it. Looked really good against Monroe and Lafayette over their last couple of games after having some cancellations. It's Little Rock just trying to get into the swing of things, and that's... How about that swing of things? Jovan Stulich knocking down a triple. And a couple triples early for Little Rock. Hey, you said it. If uh, Little Rock has a good chance of, of pulling this one out, they're going to need some outside shooting. Stulich and uh, Myron Gardner have provided that early for Little Rock. So Darrell Walker fired up. He's standing up. <laughs> Looks like he wants to get out there and play a little defense. He's preaching to his Trojans to get on their man. And 11-8 ball game early in this one is Texas State. Shooting well from the field. So active as Stulich now, down low, trying to get a little defensive stop, and instead it's the big fella and the follow inside. What a job there by Nigel Caesar. And that's where Little Rock has to have its guard up. A couple offensive boards there for Texas State. That is what they do so well. Again, they're grabbing offensive rebounds on 34% of their missed shots this season. Little Rock's going to have their hands full tonight in the paint. 13 to eight, Texas State with the lead is CJ White pull up jumper and he knocks it down for his first points of the ball game. And picking up where he left off again that game against Georgia Southern, it was CJ White who really got hot at the in the final eight minutes or so of that game, knocked down three triples, uh, helped Little Rock come back and win that game against the Georgia Southern Eagles. Again, a lot of guys for these Trojans are going to have to play some extended minutes as Caleb Asbury just showing you the skills blows right by Stewart. He's just got so much skill and athleticism. Really tough, uh, really tough to defend on the perimeter. Good ball game early on. We'd love to see a big one from C.J. White too. The transfer back home and made his debut last year with Little Rock. He's back looking to step up and be a key role player. As Garner goes inside, lowers the shoulder. What a follow by the smallest guy on the court, D.J. Smith. Well, just, it up and in. just about to say the 5'9 guy showing off the hops there. Smith goes up and gets it. But a nice drive by Gardner again before that. He's done a good job of getting to his spots early in this game. Here's Asbury. And again, Smith trying to get the backdoor steal, but instead he's going to hook Asbury on the arm. And that'll be Smith's first foul of the ball game. But what a tip. Just the little guy amongst the trees getting it to go. Going up and getting it. Like I said, showing off the hops, the athleticism. Just because he's uh, not the tallest guy on the floor doesn't mean he can't uh, go up with the best of them. Well, just to show you, I think in the first four to five minutes of this ball game, Caleb Asbury hadn't scored yet with that free throw. He's up to six, and now he's got a chance at seven. He can get to double figures and three minutes. And this guy absolutely lit Little Rock up last season. Averaged 20.5 points in, in two Texas State wins. Shot 60% from the floor. Um, and made eight triples in two games. He can get hot from deep. Interesting to see C.J. White bringing up the floor. You've got Smith in the corner. Normally Little Rock's true number one, but instead White pulls it up again. He's comfortable with that left hand, but that one way off the mark. Yeah, just didn't quite get his feet set there as he Took the dribble handoff. It was almost swinging around like a gate whenever he shot that ball. Well, Garner tried to <laughs> rotate and play solid defense. Instead, it looked like Drew Drennan ran into a brick wall, and they, they called Garner for the personal. 
And early on, 14 fouls on Little Rock. No whistles yet on the Bobcats. That is one thing the Trojans cannot afford. They do not have the depth tonight to get these guys into foul trouble. Darrell Walker preaches aggressive defense, but they have got to be very, very careful not to get guys in foul trouble. And as I'm talking, Smith picks up his second personal, and the crowd doesn't like it. In a moment ago, I said four fouls. That was actually the fifth. So this is the 16th foul now on Little Rock, one away from the bonus, and we're barely seven minutes into this one. Yeah, we're 12 and a half minutes left in this first half. Daryl preaching his case, but nothing's going to come of it. And now, you don't want to worry about depth this early in the ballgame. Little Rock's playing really hard, but you can't have guys in foul trouble. And this is what Texas State does. They've got several perimeter players that, that are good off the bounce and can get into the defender's bodies. Asbury, prime example of that. Those are the type of players that draw lots of fouls. What a move by Caleb, but that one just off the front of the iron. Good defense by Palermo, and here comes White. He'll drive and pull up. Taking on Asbury one-on-one. -on -one. Here goes Garner, one-on-four. Regular season title last year. Darrell Walker led the Trojans to a regular season championship in the 2019-20 season. That, of course, unfortunately was a season that COVID cut short. So there was no Sun Belt tournament or NCAA tournament that year for Walker and the Trojans. Yeah, it's unfortunate we're still having to talk about this. You know, the third basketball season it will officially affect it as Garner can't knock down a pair of free throws and Texas State's got a chance to build on their lead. And, and those are freebies Little Rock has to take advantage of. Texas State, we, we mentioned the foul situation earlier. They've already drawn six whistles, have taken five free throws. Those were the first two free throws of the game for Little Rock. Got a mismatch on Smith as he gets beaten inside. And good rotation by Texas State. A great outlet pass, but that one off of the mark for Shelby Adamson. Somehow it finds its hands <laughs> back into the hands of Texas State. Now it's a mad scramble, and somehow, some way, this basketball is going to be thrown off of Isaiah Palermo by Shelby Adams. Hot potato. And Coach Walker unhappy there. That time his team just out hustled. But we've said it several times now, Texas State, this squad is a beast on the offensive glass. Little Rock has to be focused and go to the defensive glass hard. So we'll see if Texas State can take advantage of the extra possession. Nice fadeaway jumper, and that one off of the mark. Nice rebound inside by Gardner. Now Little Rock out of there with it. Gardner has had some success getting into the paint with his dribble tonight. Garner's not afraid to shoot from way downtown, and that one drops. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Myron Garner is looking everything like the player Little Rock thought they were getting when he transferred in. And that's the skill set you heard so much about, that ability to go inside and outside to take people off the dribble, just a well-rounded, complete offensive player. Uh, you want to talk about well-rounded? That was a great drive by Tyrell Morgan to go inside. He just blew right by Smith, who was kind of in no man's land. He doesn't want to pick up his third personal foul with 10 and a half minutes left in the first half. And, and defensively, Little Rock has had its issues this season uh, over these last eight games, ha have really had a tough time. Teams shooting the ball really well, both from two-point range and three-point range against them. Um, being able to lock down this Texas State squad going to be a big priority tonight. Little Rock hanging around in this first half again, and you're just joining us. They are missing a lot of key pieces due to injury. But how about Jovan Stulich from the corner? That one's off the mark. Great hustle by Osawe, but he throws it away, and here comes Texas State looking to add to their lead. No Caleb Asbury right now for Texas State as he gets a little bit of rest. And Smith wanted a little, <laughs> he wanted to charge on Texas State from Drennan, but he doesn't get it. Shot clock now at five as Texas State will throw up the three ball. That one off the mark from Dylan Dawson, and Smith comes away with it. Little Rock with a chance to run here. Osawe, pump fake, steps back, and now he needs some help. Smith cutting to the basket. And Isaiah Palermo trying to get in there, and he is rejected, but they get the personal, and that one, I believe, is going to go against Shelby Adams. And a nice job there by Little Rock, pushing the tempo. Texas State, of course, team that, that really wants to slow the game down. That, that's what they've done for years. That's what they do well. Um, Coach Walker talked before this season about an emphasis on pushing the basketball. Injuries have made that, that tougher for this Little Rock team. But that time, they get out early, and then the secondary break there from Palermo um, allows them to uh, get into the paint and draw the foul. Quick correction. That one goes against Drew Drennan as Palermo knocks down the first. And 
Now you'll see some mass substitutions for Texas State. Little Rock doesn't have that luxury tonight. They can't sub in four <laughs> guys at once. And this is a Texas State team that really plays 10, 11 guys. This is a deep squad. They've got lots of guys who contribute. Um, Little Rock's going to have to lean heavy on its starters tonight. Palermo knocks down two. As they cut the lead back down to two, and Texas State with a two-point advantage. Now looks like a turnover, but Asbury with the active hands. I thought Jovan Stulich had it for a second, but now Texas State will retain possession. Yeah, that full-court pressure looked like it caught Texas State off guard. Really should have been a turnover, but Asbury saves the play. Probably not expecting a team with likely seven available players to go full court press, but Trojans mix it up as Asbury misses Harrell. They will grab the rebound, and now they will reset with 15 left. And what Texas State does so well, again, we mentioned their slower tempo, but they, they use the shot clock. They make you guard for 25 to 30 seconds every possession. Well, that's a great dive in there from Isaiah Small, and he's been off to a great start. He is up to six points. Corner three for Little Rock on the other end. Osawe can't match Texas State. Able to grab it as Harold coming the other way. Wide open, Caleb Asbury, and he knocks down a triple. Texas State starting to find their rhythm as they go up 24-17. And Asbury was due, had missed a couple good looks from three earlier. As we mentioned last year, really lit Little Rock up from three-point range in this building in a couple victories. Knocked down his first triple of the night. Trojans desperate for a bucket. The up and under from Smith. He can't get it to go. And here comes Texas State once again. Harold directing traffic. We'll see if he gets it back to Caleb. Instead, he'll go back out to Harold. And now Coach Johnson barks out the orders. And Asbury is just such a tough matchup for Little Rock when you're going man to man, as Coach Walker likes to do. He's just so shifty with the ball, so good on the perimeter. I'm not sure any Little Rock has any one defender that individually matches up really well with Asbury. Really good hustle there from Isaiah Palermo. The ball was never turned over or switched possessions. They're going to get a shot clock violation. Boy, the Trojans would sure love to have number 44 back in uniform tonight to be taking on Texas State. But Root off to doing bigger and better things, and we wish him well in his professional career. Is now the Trojans trying to find out of a little bit of a scoring drought. They haven't scored in over three minutes. Looking for something as Garner. Has it at the top of the key. Good defense by Texas State. Now White, he's very comfortable from pulling up from the short corner. That one, though, off of the mark. And you can tell C.J. White's got a little more freedom tonight with his shot selection, but hasn't been able to connect as much as he'd want. Yeah, and he's a guy that, that Little Rock really leans on to create. Uh, he, he's one of the guys that can create their own shot for Little Rock, along with Myron Gardner, in my opinion. Um, he, can get, he can get those clean looks. It's just a matter of, of knocking them down. Trojans 0 for their last four as Harold pulls up and he's able to knock it down inside the line and now Texas State starting to build that lead. And Harold again, a, a dangerous offensive player, averages double figures, has scored in double figures nine times already this season. Had a couple really nice games in Texas State's two wins with Jack Stevens Center a season ago. Yeah, it's a 7-0 run for Texas State over the past two minutes, but a nice drive inside. Sometimes it's just not going your way as Jordan Jefferson misses from point blank range. And in a game like this where you're struggling to score, those, those positions are killer. Whenever you're able to generate some good offense and get a clean look in the paint like that and not convert, that, that's tough. Well, a couple of Trojans run into each other and then wide open underneath is the big fella for Texas State, but Nate Martin misses point blank. And now Little Rock with a chance to take advantage. Speaking of some good offense but not being able to convert, Texas State returns the favor on the other end. Isaiah Palermo looking for any room, can't get it to go. A lot of contact down low, but instead it's going to go off of Myron Garner and it'll head back to Texas State. Yeah, it's getting uh, physical inside there. That was uh, Dylan Dawson, I believe, who hit the deck for Texas State as number four Shelby Adams checks in for the Bobcats. Boy, you got to take advantage of these. I don't want to call them chip shots. I know you got some defenders right in your way, but man, Little Rock could use some of those buckets inside. And, Texas State dominating in the paint early. Yeah, and, and it's one of those things you don't have to be a basketball genius to understand. Whenever you're struggling to score, when you get open layups and you get free throws, you need to knock those down. Well, there's the mismatch, and they take full advantage. They go down low to Nate Martin. He gets the easy lay-in, and 
you don't want to say Smith size is a liability, but they are switching, and, and I've already seen Martin and Smith on each other too many times for a Trojan fan. And, and Martin's a big body. They got him listed at 6'8", 215. If he's 215, he's the biggest 215 <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. That is a solid-looking guy. That time takes full advantage in the post. Patrick, I'm 215. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm 5'10", by the way. Oh, you could guard him, I bet. Uh, <laughs> Let's get back to the real athletes as the right-hander just off of the mark for Jefferson to beat the shot clock. And it's a 9-0 run for Texas State, and they got a chance to really build some momentum with about five minutes left in the first half. Yeah, Little Rock really struggling. 9-0 run for the Bobcats, up more than now at about a four-and-a-half-minute scoring drought for the Trojans. Garner tries to pick up the defense on the outside. Great job by him to stop the drive and instead right place right time is Isaiah Small and it's all Texas State over the past four minutes. And that's the eighth offensive rebound of the half for Texas State. Eight second chance points. Little Rock has got to do a better job of getting some bodies on those Texas State bigs. Not happening on this possession. Small to the big fella. Thought uh, Asbury was going to go airborne. Instead he picks up another foul. We'll see who this is going to go against and they will get Myron Garner. Oh boy. It's all that speed and tempo for Little Rock that looked so good just five minutes ago. Texas State is taking full advantage on an 11 to one run. Yeah, and Asbury is just, he's just such a smooth athlete for Texas State. Already has 10 points in the game as he knocks down the free throw. Now four of four from the foul five already. And now as Little Rock is, that's Little Rock's seventh team foul. The Bobcats are gonna be shooting free throws the rest of the way. Um, so Little Rock already down 14 points here. Over this final 440, Trojans have to be really careful and not let this thing get out of hand. You know, if you're just kind of casually watching a little bit, you would think Little Rock has done a pretty good job with Caleb Asbury in this ball game. But as you mentioned, he's got 12 points. Yeah, and I, I think so much is just the, the way Texas State plays. They run a more methodical offense, as we mentioned. They really, they really like to use the shot clock. Um, so it doesn't feel like their scoring comes in bunches. And as Asbury reflects that, he's, you know, he's got 11 of their. 32 points, make that 12 of their 32, and it feels like a quiet start. Little Rock has got to get a bucket as Garner pulls up. That one again, off of the mark, and boy, Little Rock cannot buy a bucket from anywhere right now. And that time, Asbury a little too twitchy with the basketball. You can see Coach Johnson looking back over at Caleb saying, easy now, we're on a roll. No, no need to freak out, calming his squad down, but man, as for Little Rock, they have got to get some points here as we're creeping up on our final media timeout of the first half. Yeah, that, the offensive end has been a struggle for Little Rock over the last several minutes. Both teams taking care of the basketball early, just five combined turnovers. That was the third of the game for Texas State. Little Rock, three of seven from downtown. That's really the reason they're hanging around in this ball game. Texas State just one of seven, that lone three from Asbury. is finally Garner ends the scoring drought inside. And Gardner right now, he has four of Little Rock's seven made buckets in the game. Trojans are just seven of 21 from the four. Gardner has really been the only player who consistently has been able to get to his spots and get off his shot. Yeah, Myron's your offense. He's playing hard and looking really good early in this ball game. As here we go, Harrell almost turns it over, but instead it's Texas State able to hang on to it. Osawe, active hands, trying desperately to get that turnover. Five seconds on the shot clock, the drive from Harold, what a feed inside to Isaiah Small. That is like Jason Kidd vision from Harold. What a pass. No, that was pretty. And that was really a pretty decent defensive possession for Little Rock there. Really made Texas State work, but that was just that was just Harold getting the ball and making a play. With it. On a contact down low, but instead it's going to go off of Myron Garner and it'll head back to Texas State. Yeah, it's getting uh, physical inside there. That was uh, Dylan Dawson, I believe, who hit the deck for Texas State as Number four, Shelby Adams checks in for the Bobcats. Boy, you got to take advantage of these. I don't want to call them chip shots. I know you got some defenders right in your way, but man, Little Rock could use some of those buckets inside. And Texas State dominating in the paint early. Yeah, and it's one of those things you don't have to be a basketball genius to understand. Whenever you're struggling to score, when you get open layups and you get free throws, you need to knock those down. Well, there's the mismatch, and they take full advantage. They go down low to Nate Martin. He gets the easy lay-in. 
you don't want to say Smith's size is a liability, but they are switching, and, and I've already seen Martin and Smith on each other too many times for a Trojan fan. And Martin's a big body. They got him listed at 6'8", 215. If he's 215, he's the biggest 215 I've ever seen in my life. That is a solid-looking guy. That time takes full advantage in the post. Patrick, I'm 215. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm 5'10", by the way. Oh, you could guard him, I bet. Ah! <laughs> Let's get back to the real athletes as the right-hander just off of the mark for Jefferson to beat the shot clock. And it's a 9-0 run for Texas State, and they got a chance to really build some momentum with about five minutes left in the first half. Yeah, Little Rock really struggling. 9-0 run for the Bobcats, up more than now about a four-and-a-half minute scoring drought for the Trojans. Garner tries to pick up the defense on the outside. Great job by him to stop the drive and instead right place right time is Isaiah Small and it's all Texas State over the past four minutes. And that's the eighth offensive rebound of the half for Texas State. Eight second chance points. Little Rock has got to do a better job of getting some bodies on those Texas State bigs. Not happening on this possession. Small to the big fellow. Thought uh, Asbury was going to go airborne. Instead he picks up another foul. We'll see who this is going to go against and they will get Myron Garner. Oh boy. It's all that speed and tempo for Little Rock that looked so good just five minutes ago. Texas State is taking full advantage on an 11 to 1 run. Yeah, and Asbury is just, he's just such a smooth athlete for Texas State. Already has 10 points in the game as he knocks down the free throw. Now 4 of 4 from the foul pipe already. And now, as Little Rock is, that's Little Rock's seventh team foul. The Bobcats are going to be shooting free throws the rest of the way. Um, so Little Rock already down 14 points here. Over this final 440, Trojans have to be really careful and not let this thing get out of hand. You know, if you're just kind of casually watching a little bit, you would think Little Rock has done a pretty good job with Caleb Asbury in this ball game. But as you mentioned, he's got 12 points. Yeah, and I, I think so much of this is just the, the way Texas State plays. They run a more methodical offense, as we mentioned. They really, they really like to use the shot clock. Um, so it doesn't feel like their scoring comes in bunches. And as Asbury reflects that, he's, you know, he's got 11 of their. 32 points, make that 12 of their 32, and it feels like a quiet start. Little Rock has got to get a bucket as Garner pulls up. That one again off of the mark, and boy, Little Rock cannot buy a bucket from anywhere right now. And that time, Asbury a little too twitchy with the basketball. You can see Coach Johnson looking back over at Caleb saying, easy now, we're on a roll. No, no need to freak out, calming his squad down, but man, as for Little Rock, they have got to get some points here as we're creeping up on our final media timeout of the first half. Yeah, the, the offensive end has been a struggle for Little Rock over the last several minutes. Both teams taking care of the basketball early, just five combined turnovers. That was the third of the game for Texas State. Little Rock, three of seven from downtown. That's really have made six of the last eight shots. Meanwhile, Little Rock struggling from the floor, one of their last nine. They've been really impressed with Isaiah Small. He has just found those little small pockets and areas where Little Rock has not been able to defend him. And here you can see Amir Basubich now checking into the ball game as Little Rock goes big. C.J. White off of the mark on that three as Little Rock tries to find something on offense. Harold pulls up from inside, and that one's off the mark. They have an uncharacteristic quick shot there for Texas State. You won't see them do that very often. Bit of a heat check for Harold, who's had a really nice ball game so far. Already eight points, small up to eight. Asbury with 12. Getting a lot of, really, a lot of offense from this entire Bobcat team. And then Isaiah Palermo just ends up grabbing Asbury. And, yeah, they're, they're going to call it intentional because Isaiah didn't go for the ball at all. Yeah, didn't really make a play on the ball there. And, and Asbury continues to wreak havoc. Has now drawn five fouls already, so eight. So five of the eight fouls um, uh, by Little Rock have been drawn by Abbey here in this first half. Oh, nothing malicious there from Palermo. I think that's just a frustration foul where he gets a, the rock tipped away, and Asbury, so athletic as we've been talking about, gets it away, and Isaiah just didn't want to give the layup. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really all it was, was he didn't want to give, a lay, give up the layup. I think, like you said, he was frustrated that uh, maybe it got a little careless with the basketball, but... Um, Trojans have to, to get their heads in the game, so to speak, here. Texas State, over the last six and a half, seven minutes, they've really owned this contest on a 17-2 run. Little Rock really having a tough time finding its way on both ends of the floor. So Stulich checks in for Palermo, who will take a seat after the frustration foul. 
A little over two minutes left in the first half. This was a tight ball game just about six, seven minutes ago as Little Rock and Texas State were going back and forth, but it has been all Bobcats over the last seven minutes, a 17 to two run, and they may not be done yet before this first half is over. Shot clock winding down, Harold's gonna have to throw up a shot with Stulich in his face. He'll try and get one off, and good defense by Jovan Stulich to stay on his feet and not go for the pump fake. That was good job there by Stulich to stay in front of the quicker Harold used his length to his advantage there. Looked like he got a hand on, on uh, Harrell's uh, heave there as the shot clock was winding down. You know, there's a uh, there's a lot of ball game left to see who's going to decide this one. But if you're Daryl Walker, tonight is a really good opportunity to find out what kind of guys you got and who you can really build off of, especially when you're so shorthanded. Oh, this is a time to dig deep for sure. <laughs> if you're a Little Rock right now, uh, you're, you're having a tough time. you got several guys down, Nicola Marich who has really been your focal point on offense this season is, is not available. Isaiah Palermo, Myron Gardner, um, these are guys that uh, I'm sure Coach Walker is looking to and, and looking for them to find another gear against a Texas State team that, that in my opinion, is, is really the, the cream of the crop in the Sun Belt this year. Um, on paper, I think they're the best team in the league coming off a of Sun Belt championship last season. You saw Coach Johnson there kind of sending out orders. He has done such a great job in just a short amount of time. And not only your second season leading a program, but you take over a job in the middle of a pandemic. How's that for a job? For <laughs> Taking over the middle of a pandemic, and you may have seen the clip last year, sort of one of those things that went viral, viral around uh, March Madness last year, was not able to coach in the game in which Texas State clinched the Sun Belt regular season last year. Drove to the game afterward, stayed in the car as the team celebrated in the parking lot. Um, so Terrence Johnson knows the uh, the impacts of uh, that COVID has had on uh, college basketball the, lo the last couple of years quite well. They are going to be one of the most dangerous teams here in the conference, and if they can go on and as we think they can, maybe take care of business in the conference, uh, they could be dangerous in the big dance. I'll tell you what, this is a this is a really good team in, in that I think they've got some top end guys like Ashbury who are probably as good as anyone in the Sun Belt. But j just watching them and in. in, in looking at them on paper they don't have many holes in their roster like I said they, they go a legit 10 or 11 deep they've got several guys that are some belt starter quality in my opinion beyond their, their five regular starters this is a really good Texas State team they, they, they've been known for the defense this program has really built itself up on defense um, but they've got an exceptional offense this year to go along with it first of the second hand they are trying to take care of business on the road here in Little Rock is small will knock down a pair of free throws. He's now in double figures with 10. It's like Drew Drennan and number 10 Tyrell Morgan checking into the game. These are the type of guys that don't play a ton of minutes, but you, but you look at what they do and their impact and their short amount of time on the court. These are the type of guys that if you can go to these guys and, and sort of spot minutes, you know your, your team is in good shape from a personnel standpoint. Well, you can see that speed from D.J. Smith. He is going to be a special point guard for Little Rock for years to come. But Garner is looking for Smith or Stulich or somebody in the corner, and he found nobody. Yeah, I think he was looking for D.J. Smith. Pass was Aaron. That is actually one area where Little Rock has has done a nice job this half. Just four turnovers. We, we Every game we mention that Little Rock, that, that's an area to watch, taking care of the basketball. Uh, so far this half, they have done a good job of that. They just haven't been able to, to knock down shots or, or keep Texas State off the offensive glass. A little over a minute to play in this first half. Little Rocks, one of their last 10 from the field. Looking for some answers. You can sort of see Myron Garner here at center court, just hands on his knees, trying to catch his breath. He has been running wild early in this game. Yeah, he's had his hands full. He's had a, he carried a heavy load on both ends. He, he looks like a, a player that, that is, uh, needs to catch his wind at halftime. Well, Texas State trying to add to their total. Asbury very content to shoot from downtown, and he does it over Basuvich. He puts three fingers in the air, and man, you are witnessing one of the best players in the conference. He averaged uh, 20 in two games here last year. He has 17 already with 40 seconds to play in the half. Smith with the pull-up jumper is off the mark, and now if they hustle, they can get a two-for-one, about seven-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Instead, it looks like Texas State is content to set up their offense up 20 points. And Texas State really has put on a show the last 10 minutes or so after what was really an evenly played half for, for the first 10 to 12 minutes. What a follow on the offensive blast there by Tyrell Morgan. And now they are up 22 with 10 seconds left. We'll see if Little Rock can get 
One final bucket before the end of the first half. Garner driving, looking for somebody. Smith from three-point land from way downtown. And the freshman from North Little Rock. And build uh, 17 points um, on his tally in the first half. So here we go. Little Rock will start with the ball to open up the second half. Again, Hayden Val gave you alongside Patrick Newton inside the Jack Stevens Center. Thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday night inside the Sun Belt Conference. It's kind of hard for me to say these words, but last trip around the sun for the Trojans. It's a heartbreaker. This is a team that uh, has been in this league for 31 years, but now um, off to uh, an exciting new start in the Ohio Valley Conference. Kevin Osawe gets the scoring going. If you're doing the math at home, that's a 5-0 run for Little Rock after that three-pointer from Smith before the first half. So we'll see if the Trojans can get a little offense going as Texas State gets the offense going. Instead, what they're going to call is a offensive foul on Nate Martin. It looks like he had Palermo's arm hooked just inside the paint. Going to be the first personal on Martin there. Really the, the, the main player when you look at Texas State with some, some real size on the inside. That is an area where... Little Rock has really added efficiency tonight without uh, Nicola Marie in the paint. See if the Trojans can get something going offensively as Coach Walker preaches to his guys. Palermo on the drive looking for a little help back out to White. Harrell guarding White who's had a really excellent first half on the offensive side. Harrell with eight points. He's close to double figures. Five seconds on the shot clock. Little Rock's got to get something up. Instead, it's stolen away, and here comes Texas State on the breakaway, and it's an easy throwdown for the Bobcats and Shelby Adams. And that time Jefferson with the lazy cross-court pass. Texas State picks it off and goes the other way. White over in the corner on the skip pass looking for somebody. As now Garner will reset the offense. DJ Smith waiting to check back into this ball game. That was deflected, so... No over and back, but once again, Little Rock in shot clock trouble. They got to get a shot off down to five. Jefferson looking at it. He'll drive, looking to get something up. Garner's got to put up a shot. He does from way downtown, almost goes in, but instead it's Martin with the board. And that time, not a good offensive possession for Little Rock. Really was not able to get into its offense at all. They've got that mismatch down low if they want it to Martin, but a good job by Osawe on the rotation defensively, but instead he gets back to Martin up with the left hand. He can't get it to go, and instead it's going to go off of Caleb Asbury and head back to the Trojans. And that time Martin did a good job there, got good position with the up and under step through, but just smoked the layup, wasn't able to convert. 45-26 lead for Texas State. They have... Had so many offensive role players play so well early in this ball game. Looking to go on the road and get a big Sunbelt Conference victory before heading up to Jonesboro on Saturday. Here's Kevin Osawe from downtown. That one just off of the mark, and Harrell grabs it. Osawe started the season off shooting the ball so well from three has, has really cooled off. Kind of a wild shot from Harrell, a bit of a heat check. He was shooting so well in the first half, and that one is all. Hey, fellas, uh, we're taking care of business in the paint. Let's go back to that. Yeah, I think that was a uh, timeout to reinforce the uh, effort and execution of, uh, of his team. Um, but you're, you're right, Texas State, as Gardner makes a nice move there, Texas State has dominated the paint in this one, 24 um, to 8 in terms of, of paint scoring in favor of the Bobcats through the first uh, 23 minutes or so. Well, give Little Rock a lot of credit. They are not going away quietly. It's They've strung together a couple of nice offensive possessions to get a couple of buckets. And then Smith, normally as quiet as could be, clapping his hands, making a little noise. And how about the freshman, DJ Smith, forcing the turnover? Nice defensive play. Coach Walker all season has really been high on DJ Smith's defensive potential. That's why he was starting games early in this season as a true freshman. Was He liked uh, the way he led that point of attack on defense. Do not see him make a lot of noise, very humble, very quiet, but there clapping his hands. And how about that on the defensive end? Then makes a great pass as Kevin Osawe can't finish the end one, but he will go to the line to shoot two. And Little Rock showing some life here to start the second half. Osawe will have two free throws here and a chance to get a Texas State margin. Get another look. Nice find there by DJ Smith as Osawe goes up and draws the contact. I think it's fair to call Little Rock a second-half team. Again, we mentioned just they haven't played in so long, but the game we were fortunate enough to see just, what, a little over two and a half weeks ago, we thought they were left for dead for a while, and boom, they just turned it on. 
that, that's a great point. I, I think Georgia Southern felt very in control of that game. Frankly, I felt like Georgia Southern was, <laughs> was very much in control of that game. It was one of those contests where Georgia Southern kind of had a 10, 12 point lead and it really felt bigger than that. It really felt like they were more uh, 15 to 20. But uh, Little Rock really flipped the switch those final 10 minutes. Um, CJ White gets hot from the outside and really sparks the Trojans on offense. Well, Texas State led this game by as many as 22 in the first half. That lead down to 15. Little Rock forcing some really tough offensive possessions for Texas State. And again, that's Asbury off of the mark. And don't count these Trojans out just yet. Plenty of time. And this is one of those things where I'm sure Coach Walker has reminded his team that there are no 20-point plays. You know, in, in, a, in an effort to come back from a margin like this, you have to take it one possession at a time as Gardner draws a foul there in the high post. Well, that's one way to do it is when you get a personal foul on the best player on the floor is Caleb Asbury picks up his second personal. You'd love to give him a little foul trouble, but long way to go. And this one, 16, 15 left. So Palermo will get the inbounds and try to convert. And two quick fouls on Texas State as Coach Walker's clapping his hands. Texas State, uh, maybe just a little lackadaisical, maybe that big time first half lead got these guys uh, not to sleep, but just trying to pick something up here. You, you see it a lot in basketball. Team jumps out to a, to a big lead like this early. They have tough time keeping the same type of energy and focus um, once after they've built that lead. Well, everybody in the building wanted DJ Smith to fire up a deep three after <laughs> Oh, man, after sending Drew Drenian down to his feet. That's one of those and one mixtapes you saw back in the day. And I think we're going to get uh, either double personals or double technicals as the officials blew the whistle and put the extra killers going. Yeah, the way winning makes me think it's going to be a double technical. Um, we'll see if we can get uh, any signal from the official. But uh, and that's going to be another whistle on Texas State. I believe that's going to be either the fourth or the fifth team foul on the Bobcats in the half. We'll clean all this mess up when we get back. Little so another look at the sequence that we left you with. Uh, a couple of technical fouls called. Really bad news if you're a Texas State fan. Not only does Caleb Asbury pick up a personal, but he also picks up a technical. Yeah, and you see the, the first personal there. It looks like Asbury didn't give room uh, on the jumper for I'm not sure who took that jumper for Little Rock didn't give him room to come down so the personal gets called on Asbury then he and Gardner kind of start to mix it up after the play has some words for one another they're both hit with technical fouls now that is four fouls on Caleb Asbury who has really been the focal point for the Texas State offense um, he's gonna have to take a seat Myron Gardner also picks up a technical he's up to three personal fouls in the game Another situation to watch as he has been such a big part of the Little Rock offense in this game. And that is big, too. So Caleb has to take a seat as he explains the situation to his head coach. And now the free throw makes it a 14-point ball game. So plenty of time in this if you were Little Rock. And now Texas State is without their best player. Yeah, suddenly Little Rock has some life here after really struggling over the final 10 minutes of that first half in almost every area. Trojans have come out with a spark. And Texas State, frankly, has come out flat to start the second half. We'll see if the Bobcats can respond. Drive inside, and they're going to get a foul call. Little Rock doesn't like that one. A great cut by Morgan inside, and he'll go to the line for two. That's right, and that was a little more akin to the Texas State execution that we've grown accustomed to seeing here. A nice cut there, nice find, and that'll send number 10, Tyrell Morgan, a 73% free throw shooter to the line for two. Then 325 since Texas State last scored, and that will end at 325 as we see Morgan knock down the first free throw. Boy, Isaiah Palermo really wanted to stop and get a charge. He realized he was in the cylinder and jumped up and tried to make a play, but he gets called for the foul. And that was Nigel Caesar, the big man inside, 6'8", 225, with a nice pass from the post to find Morgan streaking in for the shot that will lead, uh, that led to the free throws. Well, now Isaiah Palermo's gotta be very, very careful as he checks out of the ball game. He's got four fouls. And Little Rock does not have the depth tonight that Texas State does. They can afford to lose a guy or two. You don't ever wanna lose a player with the caliber of Caleb Asbury, but he's on the bench and Little Rock can ill afford any foul trouble as now Kevin Osawe goes back inside of Garner. He does the fadeaway jumper. That one 
off of the side of the rim in order to go back towards Texas State. And Gardner has been so successful in terms of getting to the rim tonight. Uh, he's capable of hitting that type of fallaway jumper. Would like to see him be a little more aggressive when he gets the ball in the post. Bobcats trying to get back on track. Then a sloppy first half for Texas State. It's, I don't know how that's not steps, but instead it's just a missed shot. And somehow Drennan gets a board, his own board back, and now it's a mad scramble for it. We'll see what the officials say, and they say it stays at Texas State. But from our angle, it certainly looks like Drew Drennan took about four steps. Yeah, we'll get another look at it here. Yeah, right. looks like he maybe gets an extra one down, gets the shot off. What I'm curious with here is, how does the ball stay with Texas State? It looks like Texas State has control. Oh, they're going to say Gardner touched Gardner. the ball and was out of bounds. Got so that's why it's staying with Texas State. I was kind of wondering that myself is how in the world that's going to stay Texas State basketball. But Gardner got a piece of the ball, had his leg on the line. So it will remain with Texas State. Only six seconds, though, on the shot clock. So the Bobcats got to get one off in a hurry. Good defense by Smith to extend beyond the three-point line. Three ball attempt, desperation three off of the backboard, and that is going to be a shot clock violation. Shelby Adams had no choice. He just threw it up and high off the backboard. And Shelby Adams is a, a nice three-point shooter, um, actually shooting 64% on the year. You hear of the 50-40-90 club. Shelby Adams, 50-65-90, his shooting percentage on the season that time. Um, got himself a clean look there with a, a short shot clock, but uh, was way off. Just a bit outside as Little Rock will try and answer with a solid offensive possession of their own. They needed Smith looking for the teardrop, and he gets it to go just around the free throw line. Is now DJ Smith getting active. And Smith, the offense has been inconsistent this year, but uh, you like to see it whenever he's playing with confidence and getting some shots to drop up to seven points on three of five shooting on the evening. Smith was trying to pick up the offensive foul. Instead, they will get him with the reach. So that's his third personal foul. And you've seen DJ really be active so far. And again, we mentioned how shorthanded Little Rock is in this ball game. If you're a Trojan fan, you got to like what you've seen from the freshman. Oh, yeah, it's played great. That time was hit so hard. Literally, he, his feet came out of his shoe. He's, re, uh, he's readjusting his shoe and, and relacing right now as he, uh, the game begins. But uh, good effort tonight from Smith. Has been a really good player for Little Rock all year. Again, playing as a true freshman out of North Little Rock. Um, I, I feel like the swing skill for him at this point is going to be developing a more consistent outside shot. What a drive and a finish inside by Davion Coleman. Haven't heard much from him in this ball game. Watch finish for the Texas State guard. Yeah, really physical finish here as you see him get to the right hand and finish through the contact from C.J. White. Coleman's first bucket of the game. White picked his second personal foul, and you can kind of see that uh, now Texas State starting to find their rhythm just a little bit as they looked, uh, looked a little rough to start the second half. Yeah, it came out sluggish, a little flat to start the second half. They've, they've regained their focus since, ironically, with Asbury now on the bench, uh, looking more like uh, the team that uh, closed that first half on such a run. Frustration foul from Tyrell Morgan as he thought he had a clean steal and was heading the other way. But instead, they're going to get Morgan with the personal. And Texas State's 17 foul is going to be shooting free throws the rest of the way. That's one way to climb back into this ball game again. 17 point differential with 13.42 left in this ball game as Myron Garner knocks down his first free throw of the afternoon. It's, I guess it's evening, 7.47. Garner having himself a nice game now up to 13 points. Jinxed him. Three of six now from the foul line. Sorry, Myron. <laughs> Texas State coming the other way with a 16 point lead. And they're going to get steps on Tyrell Morgan. A couple of frustrating possessions for Tyrell Morgan, but he'll regroup and let's we'll see if Little Rock can get something going. Yeah, not the, not the start at the half that uh, Texas State envisioned. Just two of six from the four to start and four turnovers. More turnovers through the first uh, six plus minutes of the uh, second half than they had in the entire first half. Well, Little Rock can't afford to go blow for blow here they have got to get something going on offense instead it's going the other way as cj white gets called for an elbow he's going to be the third on uh on white he joins myron gardner with three and isaiah palermo who i believe yes is still on the bench uh sitting with four personal fouls 
Texas State going to add their lead. They've led by as many as 22 in this ball game. Really been all Bobcats since about the 10 minute mark of the first half is the drive and a nice find to the outside. A corner through ball is off the mark from Drennan. But Texas State nearly kept possession of it and settled to go out of bounds and head back towards Little Rock. And Texas State has been strong on the offensive glass tonight so far as, as with several things we've mentioned this half. Little Rock has done a much better job. Texas State with just one offensive board here in the second half after corralling nine over the first 20 minutes. And here comes Smith running the point. What a screen by Myron Garner. I don't know if they're going to get a block or a charge. If Rex Chapman was here, I'd ask him. <laughs> but uh, they're going to get they're going to get a block. That was I. I heard certainly and could swear that I felt that collision from all the way over here. <laughs> that was brutal. My bones were sore just from watching that as uh, as Gardner and Drennan collide there. They're going to call it on Drennan. We'll send Gardner to the foul line, where as we mentioned just a moment ago, he is. Uh, he is three of six on the evening. Well, you call it blocker charge. What'd you think? I thought, uh, you know, honestly, <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought they were going to call it on Gardner, honestly. I did too. <laughs> uh, all right, instead, Gardner, he gets the benefit of the call. That's why we're not wearing the zebra outfit. We're over here, and Gardner knocks down a free throw. He's up to 13. I, I didn't see any arguing after the play. It didn't seem like there was there, there was much disagreement from, uh, I think that was Drennan from Texas State. I'm sure that neither Gardner nor Drennan are feeling great after that collision, I can promise you. They I probably may, didn't have well, the energy to argue after I, that hit. If I'm Drennan and I'm 6'1", running in a Gardner <laughs> who's 6'6", 220, again, quote unquote, 220, uh, I'm going to ask for the benefit of the call if I got to <laughs> run into this guy and I'm a little dazed afterwards. Drennan's pretty solid. The look on Gardner's face after that <laughs> collision as he went to the floor made me think he didn't enjoy that collision too much either. Well, Nigel Caesar really enjoyed that as he gets the bucket, but then they're going to Caesar with a foul. And Texas State showing a little frustration, but they're going to get him a t they're going to give him a T on that one. Really? Okay. Not sure what he said or what he did. I, I missed it. Was he saying something? I, I, or think was he something said, I think he said something after the bucket here. And I think he may have said. Uh, one of them words he shouldn't have said. He appears to talk to Kevin Osawe a little bit, and the officials did not appreciate what he had to say afterwards. Yeah, it kept the extracurricular going just a little bit too long. Usually officials will let you get away with something brief. If there's an exchange after the play like that, but if you keep it going down the court, as uh, as Caesar did there, um, they're going to get you. They're going to give you the whistle. And again, you can get away with that when you're up 15 points at the time, I guess 17 points. But man, that's maybe that's a lesson Coach Johnson has. Uh, and in the conversation these guys will have after the ball game is, you know, we, we can't have something like that when it's a much tighter affair. Yeah, and Texas State, again, to me, they're they're the best uh, team in the Sun Belt right now. They played an excellent game tonight. They have not been nearly as sharp here in the second half. And, and part of that is a symptom of, of building a big lead, but um, have not had the same focus to start the second half as they had in the first. Well, Texas State bench is yelling for a foul to be called on Jovan Stulich, who's battling inside against Caesar. No foul call, though. We play on here. We owe you a media timeout on the next whistle as the pull-up jumper from just inside the three-point line is off the mark by Adams. But we will get a foul called inside, and that one will go against Little Rock. And it will remain with Texas State as we head off to a break. It has been all Bobcats in this ball game as they lead it by 15 over Little Rock. Not great, Bob. No. Texas State in firm control here in Little Rock as the Bobcats lead it 52 to 37. A couple of uncharacteristic uh, fouls on the Bobcats trying to clean things up. Uh, maybe some frustration fouls or a little extracurricular activity, but man, that's really been the only problem for the Bobcats tonight. <laughs> yeah, they've really been in control from the tip. Um, I, I guess I shouldn't say it quite like that. It was, it was a, a more even game in the first 10 minutes or so, but really the back half of that first half, Texas State really went into another gear and, and pulled away. Little Rock has not led, has not held a lead tonight. Um, Texas State not quite as sharp to start the second half and have had some uncharacteristic fouls, but, but still in control of this one. Well, the good news is if you're a Trojan fan, is Texas State is in foul trouble, but not a lot you can do with foul trouble if Nigel Caesar can get that kind of look inside. Yeah, he's up to six points and four boards. He has, uh, he has been nice to start this second half. 
Myron Garner with a nice feed to Osawe, but he didn't see it and couldn't handle it. Instead, it goes back over to Texas State, and here comes Harrell looking to add to this lead. And Caesar is begging for it again inside. He has a smaller Smith on him. Boy, has he been active in the second half. Didn't see much from him in the first half, but he's been fairly good so far. And then again, right on cue with Caesar as he he stares back, man. As soon as he gets a bucket inside, he's going to let you know about it. Yeah, he is uh, playing with a lot of intensity inside. And I'm not sure which Bobcat got his hand on that. That was Coleman or Caesar. Someone swatted that ball away. That, uh, that my friend, is what you call rejection. <laughs> Another look at this one here. I mean, as he, Gardner with the drive, and I, I can't. No, tell. that was uh, that was uh, Davion Coleman. Coleman, I think, got a piece of it. I mean, he sent it into like the second row. Very athletic play by Coleman, the 6'2 guard. Well, here's Smith. Here we go as he tries to get the offense going. DJ Smith, the freshman from North Little Rock, over to Isaiah Palermo. Little Rock, you know, this one not quite over yet, but man, you just love to see the Trojans get together a little bit of offense. As Myron Garner fires over to Palermo from downtown. That one off to the front of the iron, and he gets the friendly bounce at home. Pulls Little Rock within 16. Palermo has been on the bench for several minutes with foul trouble. He's now up to seven points on the game. His first, his first triple, his first field goal, actually. All of his uh, previous four points came at the foul line. Well, you did your do job if you're uh, Little Rock. You got... Caleb Asbury in foul trouble in the second half. We have not seen him very much since he picked up a personal and a technical in the span of about five seconds. What a drive inside by the big fellow Tyrell Morgan with the left hand off the glass. And that was a good job there by Morgan, recognizing he had the smaller DJ Smith on him, just went right into the Smith's chest, finished through him. Well, that is not good. We are seeing Isaiah Palermo down on the other end, grabbing his ankle. Texas State furious that a whistle was blown before a made bucket by Harold, but if we can take a look on the other end, Isaiah Palermo, I think, rolled his ankle. Yeah, he's walking off, uh, looks a little gingerly with that right foot as he slowly walks toward the Little Rock bench. I'm going to take one more look at it as Isaiah goes up top. And, oh, oh, yeah. 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 Oof. Not to... Sorry for the jinx there <laughs> from both Patrick and I, but you can clearly see that ankle turn, and uh, that's one that's one of those you just know, you know, was tough. That's the universal reaction you yeah. just heard whenever you see someone roll their ankle <laughs> like that. Um, you, me, and everybody watching this broadcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably had a lot of similar reactions at home as well as uh, C.J. White checks in for Palermo. So now if you're Little Rock, you may be out without Isaiah Palermo, who just checked out of the ball game with that rolled ankle. Death, which we knew was going to be an issue tonight, and it has certainly been the difference in this ball game. as Harold pump fakes on Stulich. Nice recovery from Yovanda. Get a hand up at least, and now we're going to go the other way, and they will, uh, I believe, get Morgan with the personal. That is going to be on Morgan, his second. Little Rock will, will shoot free throws. It looks like C.J. White walking to the free throw line for Little Rock White. A good free throw shooter. And we're going to see a lot of these over the final nine and a half minutes of this ball game. Texas State, it is completely flipped from the first half where it was Little Rock who was in a world of foul trouble in the first five, six, seven minutes of this ball game, and then Texas State uh, just kind of undisciplined in the second half. Yeah, that scenario has completely reversed itself, really. But both teams almost swapped identities here to start the second half as White knocked down the second. He's now three of four from the foul line on the night. Um, came into this one almost 80, at almost 80% from the season at the charity strike. Little Rock putting on that full court press. They'll now back away as Stulich will pick up Harrell as they advance it into the front court. Texas State very content to run a little bit of offense, run a little bit of time here. Harold thought otherwise of taking a deep three, and now the Bobcats into their offense. Garner picking up the inside. Instead, he goes back outside to Dawson. Five seconds left. Dawson got to put up a shot, looking for somebody. And it's Harold's going to have to launch one if he doesn't see the shot clock. Instead, the floater just off of the mark, and Osalway grabs it. Nearly got it to drop somehow. Harrell was able to generate a good look there, had a clean look at a floater, and almost went down, rimmed out for the 5'9 guard. Boy, what an empty feeling that would have been if you're a Trojan fan to watch that go in. And yeah, they're going to get 
Myron Garner lowering his shoulder. He can't believe it. And for Garner, that is going to be his fourth personal. Yeah, tough, uh, tough one for Gardner, but he, he really did all the things you can't do. Lowers his shoulder <laughs> directly into Harrell. It, it, the right arm extends a little bit. I mean, he really checks all the boxes there of an offensive foul. Harrell does a good job getting himself into positioning, getting himself into position, rather, um, and when he feels the contact going to his back. Doesn't help when the guy's about eight inches shorter than you as well when you lower that shoulder. Yeah, and about 50 <laughs> pounds heavier. Yeah, that, uh, that, that doesn't make for good optics and a, in a block chart situation. So here we go, Texas State back with the ball, up 16, trying to extend that lead or at least run out a little bit of clock. Caleb Asbury now back in the ball game as well. He has been on the bench for nearly seven, eight minutes. The floater won't go, but the follow inside by the big fella of Martin, and now this lead is back up to 18. And another offensive board there for Texas State as Martin gets the tip. Asbury comes right back in and immediately gets himself a good look that leads to the putback by Martin. Eight minutes left to play in this ball game. Again, it has been all Texas State since about the 12 minute mark of the first half. Jovan Stulich from downtown trying to knock one in, and instead it's off the mark, and Asbury out of there with it. And Texas State right now in control, trying to get the margin back to 20, up 60 to 42. Been really impressive what Martin's been able to do inside. They've been able to find the mismatch. As many players as possible available to close the year. Meanwhile, Texas State looking like really one of the premier teams in the Sun Belt Conference. They will head to Jonesboro on Saturday to take on the Red Wolves. That'll be a fun matchup as Harold fires over to Small. Too many steps for Asbury, who's been quiet in the second half and quite honestly a little frustrated. Still stuck on 17 points. Yeah, yeah, scoreless in the second half. Has missed both of his shots. Little Rock, meanwhile, really hadn't shot the ball much better, but what they have done is draw fouls. Nine of 12 from the foul stripe in the second half has allowed Little Rock to, to, to chip away at the halftime margin. Kevin Osawe from downtown as he's able to knock down the triple and don't count him out just yet. Only 15 point ball game with seven minutes to play. And Osawe has that ability, not shooting a great percentage from three on the season, but earlier this year, he was lights out. Had a couple games where he made multiple three-pointers earlier in the season. Would like to see him get that three-point stroke going again. Texas State trying to work a little clock and at the same time extend their lead. They, get, they were up by as many as 22 in the first half. The drive and the wild shot from Harrell is off of the mark, and that one never hit the rim, and Martin never knew it. Yet never drew iron there. I think Harrell thought he was going to be able to get the foul on the initial drive. It looked like he tried to do the move. You see in the NBA a lot where you, where you pull the ball through. I think he thought he was going to be able to get the whistle on Smith, but didn't come. Was still able to make a nice drive, but just wasn't able to convert off the glass. Uh, there's still plenty of time left in this ball game for Little Rock. If you can get this thing under 10 before the final media timeout, you have got a chance. And you're going to need some buckets in a hurry, but the great news is, is, is Texas State's in foul trouble as C.J. White fires from downtown. There's a three-point bucket. It's 12, Patrick. And the lefty knocks it down. This was the guy that really, his three-point shooting got Little Rock back into it against Georgia Southern. Well, on the other end, there's a near block by Myron Garner. Instead, he's going to be called for the personal foul, and I believe that is going to do it for Myron Garner, who picks up number five. Every Trojan fan was begging for a clean block. Yeah, tough break for Little Rock there. That is going to be number five on Gardner, who has been Little Rock's most productive player on offense today. 13 points, that's a team high. He and E.J. Smith, the only Trojans in double figures. Solid outing for Myron Garner, who was leading the way for the Trojans with 13 points. A really productive offensive night for Myron, and I'm sure he'll get a nice ovation from the crowd. Yeah, really probably the best game we've seen Myron Gardner play in a Little Rock uniform. As you mentioned earlier, Hayden, you can see the potential. You've seen it really since he's been back on the court. You can see the explosiveness whenever he has the ball in the perimeter. Um, tonight with Nicola Marich out of the lineup, really a chance, uh, was a chance for him to show what he can do. Oh, you can see the coach is kind of explaining to him, almost let that bucket go if you can. Don't pick up that fifth personal with six minutes left in this ball game. But that will do it for Myron as Texas State gets that lead 
back up to 13, going one of two from the free throw line. Yeah, and Texas State looks like they're going to apply some pressure here. Looks like it's just going to be a single man-to-man -man press, though. Do the Trojans have one last little final run in here if they can get this thing down to single digits? A 13 point lead for Texas State. It's CJ White from downtown. He knocks it down, and it's a 10 point ball game. That's back to back triples for CJ White. If there's a metric out there that can measure streakiness in shooters, I want to know what it is for CJ White. It feels like when that guy sees one, go, sees one shot go in, he immediately gets hot. Well, Jovan Stulich gets beat deep on the full court press. A nice bucket for. Caesar, who gets the lead back to 12. Just kind of a lapse of defensive judgment there from Jovan Stulich. Let him get behind him. Yeah, it's a couple times now. As Little Rock has applied that pressure after a made bucket. Have uh, They've given up the home run pass. Wild shot from Kevin Osawe as that one is blocked. And now Texas State comes back with it. A little over five minutes to play. Boy, that's... You don't want to say that's it, but that bucket almost felt like a backbreaker for Little Rock if they could have got a stop there. They have to go back inside to Small, and here's Isaiah Palermo. We thought his night may be done with that ankle injury. Instead, he gets it. They call a foul on Shelby Adams, and now Palermo's going to go to the free throw line. And Little Rock continues to get to the foul stripe this time. That has really been uh, the, the really what is, has driven this comeback. Little Rock has taken 12 free throws here in the second half, and the Trojans, after making a few shots, three of their last three to be precise, now shooting 50% from the floor since halftime. Give this Trojan team a lot of credit. They do not quit. They have battled back. Depth's been a huge issue as Palermo knocks it down. And I can't believe I'm saying this, Patrick, but uh, this has got a chance to be a 10-point ball game. Uh, no, it, 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 it feels, for, for people who have been watching this entire game, <laughs> it feels crazy to say that Little Rock has clawed their way back to it. Now officially a 10-point game. It, it really felt like this was a game that Texas State was just going to run away with at several different points. Um, but the Trojans have hung around and fought their way back in. Well, Harold's got to go. They, they got a chance at a 10-second call if they can get things going, but instead Harold gets it across half court, and now Texas State can set up their offense with 20 seconds on the shot clock. And Harold, a veteran point guard here, will look to settle down Texas State. Asbury, this is the guy that's done it all year so far for Texas State. Steps back against Smith for the three ball. That one off of the mark, small and white battle, and it's going to go back to Little Rock. And that was great defense by DJ Smith, moving his feet, staying in front of Asbury. That's not something that many Little Rock perimeter defenders have been able to do successfully tonight. Little Rock, three of their last three. You need points in a hurry if you're the Trojans. Here's Palermo feeding it inside to Stulich, back outside to Osawe. He thought about it and said Smith gets it to go. Here's Palermo. They are all over White now. They don't want him shooting another three as he knocked down the last couple. And we've got some contact between Stulich and Small. No call. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Somebody's got to put something up. It's Osalway who's blocked and an empty possession for Little Rock. That is killer. Tough break there for Little Rock. Really good defense by Texas State. That, that, that's what we've come to uh, know from the Texas State program really made Little Rock uh, work that entire possession. So here's Harold, very content to run a little bit of clock. Back out to Adams, nice feed inside, small threw it away, he thought he had Caesar inside. And again, with 10 seconds left on the shot clock, Texas State throws it away. Even when you don't shoot the ball well. So if you're Little Rock, you're obviously shorthanded tonight, missing a lot of key guys. Daryl Walker's squad, they battled to the very end. You can give them a lot of credit, but where do you go from here after missing two weeks and now you just try to get back into the rhythm of conference play, I guess? Yeah, I mean, all you can do is, is just move on to the next one. You've got a team coming in on Saturday uh, in UT Arlington that uh, they're also struggling a little bit at this point in the season. Uh, Little Rock's just got to regroup and refocus and get ready for, uh, uh, for a different opponent that plays a, a much different style than this Texas State team. Trojans will fall to one and two in conference play, six and nine on the season as Harold will get rejected by Jovan Stulich. That will get a nice cheer from the crowd as Palermo gets out of there with it. Good to see Isaiah Palermo okay after that ankle turn. That's It looked pretty wicked on the bat, but he's been back in and looked uh, looked like him, looked like himself. Yeah, as you could judge from our reaction, looked pretty painful whenever we watched that replay. One of those injuries that it wouldn't shock me, sometimes you see guys roll an ankle like that and come right back in and they're able to play. But overnight, as you as, you're, uh, as the ankle starts to swell, creates issues for you. 
coming days. So one of those one of those deals where has been able to come back in and be productive here in the second half. I do wonder how that ankle is going to feel for Saturday's matchup with UTA. Yeah, no kidding. About 36 hours away from tip off in that one, you're wondering how Isaiah Palermo is going to be because they are going to need him. They need every able body they can get to get ready for the Mavs on Saturday.